Thank you, Doron. Again, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So we move to the next talk. Is uh, presented by Sven Rule. Is correct? Correct. Yes. From uh, Bar Ilan University, and uh, <clears throat> the talk is uh, titled "Recent Advances in Quantum Dot Synthesized Solar Cells." Very important topic. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I'm Sven Rühle. I'm coming from the newly opened Institute for Nanotechnology and Advanced Materials from Barilan. So what you can see here is unfortunately only computer animations, but these buildings now are standing and we just recently moved into these new buildings. So if you go down the Highway 4 uh, towards the north, you can see it clearly from the highway on the right-hand side. Um, I would like to uh, say some words about the photovoltaic market. Photovoltaic market is growing uh, very rapidly recently. Um, and you can see here, these are the numbers until 2008. This is the estimate for 2009 from the beginning of the year. Recently I read that probably it's going to be like very similar to 2008. The reason for uh, the, the stopped growth is actually the economic crisis. But you see that the forecasted value for 2010, again, uh, is a further growth. The photovoltaic market is booming, but it still depends on subsidies. And one reason, the main reason is that uh, photovoltaics is still too expensive. It cannot compete with the electricity price from the grid, so it has to be subsidized. And scaling up the market is going to reduce the cost, but also there's a lot of innovation needed in order to uh, reduce the cost further. And that's where we are coming into the game. And uh, we have been investigating recently quantum dot solar cells. Just uh, to remind you what is so special about quantum dots. Quantum dots have uh, the electronic properties can be tuned by the size of the particle. So these are particles on the nanoscale, and what you can see here, it's taken from the internet, from this publication. You see very nice the luminescence. This here is like cadmium selenide, and you see that the absorption spectra and also the luminescence spectra depends strongly on the size of the particles. The material composition is the same, it's just the size. So this makes these particles very interesting as absorber materials for solar cells. For single junction, photovoltaic cells which aim towards the entire solar spectrum to absorb as well as for uh, third generation multi-junction cells where you optimize several subcells to a certain uh, spectral window of the solar spectrum. And furthermore, quantum dots have usually higher absorption coefficient compared to dyes, for example, which are used in dye sensitized solar cells. So what is a quantum dot sensitized solar cell? Uh, we start with a wide band gap semiconductor matrix. We use TiO2 nanocrystals, which are sintered together so that they form like a mesoporous film, which is like has a thickness of the order of 5 to 10 micrometers. And on, onto the surface, this enormous microscopic surface area, we deposit quantum dots. And we have been using cadmium sulfate until now. The whole thing is deposited on a transparent conducting oxide, so you shine the light in from the left side. And the thing is immersed into a redox electrolyte, which is connected to a platinum counter electrode to close the electronic circuit. Here below, you can see an energy band diagram of the whole system. So you see here the conduction band, the valence band of the titania. You see here the quantum dot with its ground state and its first excited state. The green dashed line here symbolizes the redox potential of your electrolyte. And up on illumination, what happens is that you excite an electron from the ground state into the excited state. And when this excited state is located above the conduction band edge, electrons can be injected into the titania and diffuse towards the front contact, while the oxidized quantum dot is recharged by the redox electrolyte. And the positive charge is also brought by diffusion to the platinum counter electrode. The injection of electrons lifts or the quasi-Fermi level of electrons towards the conduction band edge and what you get as a potential or the maximum potential that you can achieve is the open circuit voltage 
which is defined by the energy difference between your redox potential and the quasi-Fermi level. So I'm going to talk about energy level alignment, which we have been uh, achieved recently, and I want first uh, to phrase the problem. So what is the problem in disensitized solar cells or in quantum dot sensitized solar cells? It's the following. You have like here this injection process, then you have like the diffusion here, and this is basically the, your photon energy that you can see here, H nu, and this here is your potential. So you have here a lot, a huge loss of energy due to these energy losses that occur here in the charge transfer and charge transport processes. So what you would like to have is something where your energy level is like closely aligned to the bottom of the conduction band edge and that your ground state level is also like closely aligned to your uh, redox potential, that these recharging and injection processes are not uh, causing too much loss. The question is now, how can this be achieved? And we have uh, recently made a major step forward to solve this problem. And what we have, have been doing, we used mesoporous titania, we deposited quantum dots of cadmium sulfide, and we used polydispersed quantum dots. And that's important because with polydispersed quantum dots, the lowest excitation level depends like on the size. You have all kinds of sizes there, and that's symbolized here. So you have like certain quantum dots, the large ones, which are not able to inject into the titania, and then you have like the small ones, when they are excited, they can inject into the titania. So if you find now a way to shift all these energy levels up and down, you will see like a shift of your onset uh, wavelength from where you see photovoltaic action. So in this case, where everything is shifted down, you need like this photon energy in order to see photovoltaic action of such a device. So, and uh, this has been recently published. What have we done? We used a series of molecules which have like a uh, thiol binding group and which had like here uh, some group which gave the whole molecule a different molecular dipole moment. And we were measuring the photovoltage as a function of the wavelength. So we started scanning the wavelength at 600 nanometers. And what we saw was that the onset of the photovoltage was strongly dependent on the dipole moment. So if we define here the onset of the signal as 20% of the maximum signal we measure and we plot that versus the dipole moment of these molecules, we find here this linear relation. So we see that the OCH group is basically um, causing a photovoltage onset at uh, longer wavelengths, while the NO2 is like shifting the whole thing far into the blue. And this is schematically shown here. So actually, we could use these dipole molecules in order to uh, shift our energy levels up and down with respect to the titania. This is now a little bit surprising because we are not modifying the quantum dot titania interface. We are just absorbing these molecules on the shell, on the, on the outer surface of the cadmium sulfide, and these molecules are also not binding very well to titania. So we know that we are just modifying the outer surface of the cadmium sulfide quantum dot. If you look into the photocurrent, we see basically the same trend. We also see like the highest photocurrents for the OCH uh, derivative, and we see lower photocurrents for more positive dipole moments. One exception here is the NO2, and uh, with the NO2 we are also measuring on flat samples the contact angle, and we found that the NO2 is strongly improving the wetting behavior. So you can imagine that uh, your photocurrent does not only depend on the energetics, but also on the, on the wetting of the whole thing. And that's why we believe uh, the NO2 is not on, the, on this linear trend line uh, when it comes to the photocurrent. So how do we explain this now? As I said, we have like here our dipole molecules, we have like here our quantum dot, and we have here like the titanium nanocrystal. 
And our current understanding is that we're basically inducing an electric field over the quantum dot, which is responsible for the shift in the energy levels, which is like schematically shown here. Here I have the local vacuum level. Here I have the band edges of the titania. Here I have the uh, electric field over the particle. And if the field is like um, pointing, uh, if the field is like uh, pointing in one direction, the whole the, the energy levels are shifted downwards. So if I have like excitation here, it's not enough to inject like the electron, which is uh, this red thing here, that's the electronic uh, wave function. It's not enough energy to inject it here, while in such a case where the electric field over the particle is like in a different direction, we can basically inject electrons from the same electronic level into the titania. And that's a very important step forward in order to optimize quantum dot sensitized solar cells and not to lose so much energy in the potential. That brings me to the summary. Quantum dots can be used to sensitize nanocomposite solar cells. The energy level alignment is a prerequisite to increase the cell efficiency. And molecular dipoles, we have shown that molecular dipoles are very useful to uh, tune the energy levels with respect to the electron conducting media with respect to the titania. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Very interesting talk. Any questions? You're using a platinum counter electrode just for uh, basic uh, studies, but for practical application, can you consider to a cheaper material? Uh, we have performed this work uh, with polysulfide electrolyte. For polysulfide electrolyte, it's always very difficult to find good counter electrodes. Uh, we performed this work with a platinum counter electrode, which is not the best for the current. However, the basic, I mean, it's basically bad for the fill factor. So with the platinum counter electrode, you cannot get a good working solar cell. Uh, we are working on better counter electrodes, but uh, electrodes which perform better are usually not stable. And uh, that is also a subject of research. Thank you. I don't see any other questions, so we thank again the speaker and we move uh, 